Do not rush out and buy the new 300 series Toyota Land Cruiser. Just let some other Muppet be the lab rat in this curious experiment. Give it at least 12 months before jumping in and playing Russian roulette with this particular $100,000 disaster. Here's why. I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia, mate. Website for that, obviously. Or you can just click the card that's... up there now, dude. I would love to get you a discount on a new Land Cruiser. I surely would, but... Part of me thinks doing this is a really bad idea. So this is part one of a two-part series which is dedicated to why you would be a nut, in my view, if you jump on the new Cruiser Q right now. Like if you're a Land Cruiser owner, so a 200 series owner, and you are gagging to just blow your bank balance all over a 300 series, and who isn't, my strong advice is don't. It's contrarian, and I know the media is gushing, you know, that unbridled hype bordering on outright Toyota leg humping, so undignified. And I want to give you the context on all of that now, exactly what's happening out there in the media, just so that you can better understand how bad incentives in the motoring media lead to reports that just gush and don't ask any hard questions or make any critical observations, like... They don't acknowledge glaring deficiencies and they serve only to vomit Toyota's spin all over the page in front of you, while at the same time prick-teasing you quite effectively into buying one. In the next video, I'm going to jam it deep into the number one reason why you should wait. The potentially ticking time bomb. There's a real risk which I think you should manage with discretion by letting others run it. And that's, if that's not a good reason to subscribe and hit the bell now, then I truly do not know what is. So, you know you want this. This could be a $100,000 mistake for you, is what I'm saying, if you jump in early. And look, I don't care if you're a bolted on Toyota nutcase. I don't care if you think this is tantamount to heresy or sedition or something. Like, how could anyone criticize the king? Knock yourself out, dude, in the comments. I'll try to care, but frankly, I'm gonna fail. Instead, let us talk about you. You might think that you're doing research online, reading all those reports in the mainstream motoring media. Have you actually stopped and critically assessed what is being said in those reports, as well as what might be missing and the forces which are clearly operating commercially under the surface, effectively constraining what is said about this and every other vehicle. And I'd suggest that you're not getting the full story, the impartial assessment, the really, really hard q and I'll give you an example, which is common to just about every 300 series report which I've read. It's about weight saving. Improvements include weight reduction, lowering the center of gravity, adoption of new powertrains, and new interior and exterior design. The platform is redesigned with increased rigidity and the weight reduces by as much as 200 kilograms, thanks in part to the smaller engines. Practical motoring there, erecting their own little teepee for the low-fat vegetables. Yes. However, I'd suggest that if you pass this once-over lightly statement from Toyota through the prism of facts you quickly see that it's really not that much of a saving. See, the curb weight of a 200 series Sahara Horizon is a lardy 2.74 tons. That vehicle has elephantitis of the arse. That's a given. So even if you were to save 200 kegs, we're only talking about a weight reduction of up to just 
7% via an all-new platform with new engines, aluminium roof, lightweight bumpers and quote-unquote revolutionary laser welding techniques. Which I am not exaggerating when I say this frame constructed by our expert welders is the epitome of Toyota craftsmanship. That's TMC welding luminary Yasuhiro Yoshihara. This was reported in Car Expert, one of the most entertaining outlets close to my heart. I suspect Albors has always secretly wanted to be me. Partly because I have never secretly wanted to be him. And hey, I feel your pain, dude, but you'd have to lose the pink underpants and that might be too much of a sacrifice. I think it's in the uniform there in any case, and there's an induction. It's a process, and after that it's all sort of high-vis. Back to the vehicle. Are we seriously suggesting that after 14 protracted years of 200 series draping its lardy ass all over the off-road throne, and by using all of this purportedly revolutionary technology, these craftsmen lopping off two cylinders, etc., the best you Toyota twerps could manage is a maximum of 7% off the all-up weight. Like, dude, that's a joke right there. It kind of writes itself. Jenny Craig is almost certainly not calling TMC for a testimonial anytime soon. <coughs> Think you'd agree. 14 years of materials, technology, and manufacturing technique advances, right? The development of gigapascal steel, that was a big deal. Hot forming of critical joints, composites, bonding techniques, aluminum, as they say in America. To look at a 200 series, right, is to look back in time. You are seeing automotive technology from 14 long years ago. That's all locked in. Have we really only come 7% forward in a decade and a half? Like, nobody is saying this. It's the emperor's frigging new clothes. Like, nobody's even posing the question, has Toyota done enough? Nobody in the media, to my knowledge, is calling them out. Like, they're still building this potential shitbox on a ladder frame. The 300 series in 2021. Perhaps they would like to go the full Fred Flintstone and cut out the friggin' front footwells. Yes, get the cruiser back to bedrock. The priority here is clearly not weight saving. Like, look at the evidence. These Toyota claims are just spin. The media is dicening it up, if that's a verb. The priority, it seems to me, is doing the absolute minimum required to sell a few more Land Cruisers, not to slash weight by the maximum they could. And this regurgitation of the press releases, the complete absence of the hard question, which is prolific in the mainstream outlets like which car and cars guide and car advice, etc. Every outlet which gags for Toyota's advertising revenue, in other words, this is a gross disservice to you, I'd suggest, because this is so-called journalism functioning as a de facto PR service for Toyota. Outsourced spin doctoring, basically. Like, where's the counterpoint? You're watching it now, I'd suggest, and you probably won't be watching it anywhere else. And that's a pretty sad indictment of motoring journalism generally. Toyota and other car makers routinely hold media outlets to ransom, or at least tantamount to ransom. And the implicit threat is, be nice and just regurgitate our spin, do the prick tease for us. Otherwise, dude, no advertising revenue for you. They don't say it, of course. It's just a monumentally bad structural incentive in the process. And doubtless, select blue singlet dicks out there are going to say to me, how dare you criticise this vehicle before you drive it? To which I would retort, 
Nobody in the press has driven it yet, dude. At least nobody outside Toyota has driven it. And I'm not criticising its friggin' dynamics or the operational characteristics of the powertrain or the ride quality or the NVH or the off-road ability. And that's what driving it is going to tell you, okay? I'm criticising its fundamental engineering, which frankly I am qualified to do, unlike 99% of motoring reporters, engineering which we already know a considerable amount about. And for the record, I'm pretty sure that behind the wheel, the 300 is going to be better than the 200 it replaces. Otherwise, they will have done an emphatically crap job. We also exchange the V8 engine with the smaller V6, improving on the front-heavy feel of the 200 series. It's also hilarious that the only time carmaker insiders get to throw the old girl under the bus or even tangentially admit its deficiencies is just before the new girl goes to the prom. And in, I don't know, roughly 2060, when the 400 series is finally in the green room and somebody taps the aging 300 on the shoulder and solemnly informs it, that the fat lady is on in five. Dude, watch it go under that bus in exactly the same way. There will be no friggin' mercy. Unfortunately, you're reading these half-assed reports about the new 300 series, right? And you're thinking about buying one, and they are hacking directly into your brain, and they are weaponizing your confirmation bias that buying a new 300 is not only a good idea, but also an absolutely essential undertaking for you. You've got to ask yourself, is the priority to help you make the right call, or is it to keep those rivers of advertising gold just flowing on in? Because it can't be both. Tomorrow, I'll tell you exactly why I think discretion is the better part of valor with all of this. This new V6 diesel with its hot V and the media's gushing all over it, all these purported advantages supplied by Toyota, this engine could easily be a hand grenade with a loose pin, a monumental one in my view. And if you'd like to know why, just subscribe now and hit the bell and I'll tell you tomorrow. Toyota's got plenty of recent form here, botching far similar engineering integrations than that. You don't have to like it, it's called a fact. And at the end of the day, what am I motivated by, right? I just don't want to see you sidelined at busted ass flat, which, as the astute Cheyenne adventurer will know, is less than halfway to Dingo Piss Creek. Like, dude, you've got the mighty 300. You are wearing your best blue singlet, your steel capped safety thongs. Yes. You've hooked up the box and decanted all of your best effluent into it. You're on the road. Do they still call those boxes caravans, or is that a dirty word since Trump? I must check. Frankly, I would just hate to see you tooled up for the creek and only just limping into BA flat. Like, I'm at busted ass, mate. Me new 300's taken a dump fair in its hot V. There's number two all over. Send Panadol, Stad. Thanks, mate. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you why I really don't think Toyota can pull all this off reliably. Balance of probability, they just can't do it. Early adopters are far too likely, in my view, to get a free poopy in the trousers with each new 300. I sincerely believe this to be true. It's not clickbait. Even if Toyota rings up tonight and offers me 500 grand in advertising, like unlikely, but even if they do, just to get me hooked and shut me up or back on track in the eyes of the mainstream media, it's going to be a brief two-word conversation. Second word, off.